Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Cooler Brands, Mr. Peter Gantner. Hey, thanks, Corey. Um, and everybody, welcome to our uh, Wednesday night presentation for Cooler Brands. I know a lot of you are watching this on our Zoom. Some of you will be watching this on Facebook. Uh, we appreciate uh, you for joining us tonight. What we're going to be talking tonight is Cooler Brands. Uh, Cooler Brands is a very unique business model. Uh, my name is Peter Gantner. I am the founder of it, and I am a serial entrepreneur. I've spent my entire life building companies, working with entrepreneurs, um, and just absolutely love the process throughout it. Uh, the other founder of the company, Mr. Doug Kyle, also a very successful businessman, uh, built an insurance agency up to a multi-millions of dollars and then sold it off and since then has had success in all different areas of his life, uh, including being a national uh, bike champion um, in, in, bike, in bike racing. Um, and then also we have Mr. Jeff Hoffman. Uh, Mr. Hoffman is probably one of the most successful entrepreneurs. He's definitely in the top 1% in the world. Um, he started his first company at 25 years old, sold that company off uh, at 28 for over $100 million. And it's actually, that's why you're able to print a boarding pass at an airport today. Uh, went on to work with several other companies. Um, the biggest success that he's had to date is he's one of the co-founders of Priceline.com. I believe right now it's valued at over $90 billion. And it's one of the true success stories in the internet. So this is the top, uh, you know, their team. We have a lot of other people involved, but we'd be here all night going through them. So what are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about Cooler Brands, which is a patent pending business model. Now, some of you are probably out there going, you can patent a business model? Absolutely. If you come up with a business model that's never been done before, and you can apply for a patent with the patent office, and that's what we've done. And our patent is based on dynamic reverse royalty allocation system and methods. I'm gonna just refer to it throughout the rest of the presentation as a reverse royalty. Um, so when I came up with this concept, I was actually in Dallas, Texas, and I was trying to work with about 30 different people that all had different home base um, and uh, business type opportunities um, from barter clubs to affiliate programs to different apps to uh, MLM businesses. And we were trying to figure out how everybody could work together um, in order to create the absolute best opportunity in the world for people. Um, after a weekend and realizing that there was no way that we were going to be able to get all these people to work together, I decided that it was time for me to come up with a concept that would completely reinvent the industry. Um, and the reason why I wanted to reinvent it is because I've been in it myself. I've built teams of thousands of people, one of the people that have made it to a five figure a month income in the industry. And so we are supposed to be, or uh, myself, we're supposed. I'm supposed to be one of these people that never has to work again, right? You build it, you know, a few years, you build a big team, and then the money keeps pouring in. Well, that didn't happen for me. I know it does happen for a small, very small percentage of the people out there. But one of the things that I noticed when I was building the home-based business industry, you know, these these teams and stuff, is that the majority of people. Um, end up losing money versus making money in the businesses. And the majority of the people that get involved don't get involved for a product. They actually get involved for a business opportunity. Um, and so why is that? Well, it's really simple. The number There's two ways to make money, um, and only one of them is really residual. So one of them is just be a super salesperson and go out and sell tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of product, build a giant client base, but as soon as you stop selling, that's going to deteriorate pretty quickly. The second one, if you want to try to build any leverage or that is through recruiting. Now, therein lies the major problem. So people don't like to sell, but what people like to do less than even sell is to try and recruit people into a business opportunity. So I knew that if I was going to reinvent the home-based business industry, that I had to come up with an idea where you would not have to recruit. I'll say that again. There is no need to recruit in cooler brands in order to build true lifelong residual income. Now, you might be saying, hey, well, how does that work? Exactly. And that's where royalties come in. So when I sat down and said, hey, I need to figure out a way where um, you don't have to recruit, I knew I had to figure out what was the best method of making money truly residually, right? Who are the people who would do work for a little while and they would stop? So Michael Jackson, right? So singers, artists, uh, inventors, and even major corporations 
uh, enter into royalty deals. So that's the conclusion I came to, that if you wanted to build income that would keep coming in, you needed to put yourself in a position to be a, to, to develop royalties. Well, not all of us can sing like Michael Jackson or dance, or not all of us are able to come up with an idea and actually implement that and put that into a product or maybe sing a song or write a book. So what I figured out was this. See, there's this group of people over here called inventors and they need help in getting their projects to the marketplace. And then there's a group of people over here and you may be in one of these or you may be in both of these that want to build residual income. And I thought, why not have those two build a mechanism, a platform that would allow those two to collaborate where both of them can end up achieving what it is that they want to achieve. So the people, the residual income, and then the inventors getting their product into the marketplace. And so what a reverse royalty is, is basically royalty for the masses. So a reverse royalty is paid by the actor, the inventor, or owner of the asset for services rendered by cooler brands, by the community. But what type of stuff do we do? Well, first of all, what we allow is to get technology working for you. And what I mean by that is there's all these social platforms out there, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever went on and watched a YouTube video and simply hit the like button? Um, and you know the little commercials they play before that, right? There's advertising revenue being generated off that. Or uh, took a Facebook post and actually shared it on your wall about a product. Maybe it was, there was one recently that went around that was a tent and it was a very cool tent and it was watched over 28 million times. Hundreds of thousands of people had shared it. Um, you know, these are the things that are taking place. A matter of fact, social media marketing is such a big part of marketing right now that Nike recently um, signed a contract with one athlete for $1 billion for his lifetime social media access to his social media. That's how powerful social media is nowadays. Now, so what we do is our community, the Cooler Brands community, supports the actor, inventor, and owner with their social actions, as you will see. So there are three things that every inventor needs, right? Those three things are money, branding and marketing, and sales. Now, there's always been a traditional method of getting this done, but because of the technology we're, we were just talking about, smartphones and the internet and you know the, uh, the social media aspect that's out there, what we have figured out is that there's already ways that all three of this can be done by individuals instead of normal way that it's done. And I want to talk about those right now. So first, let's talk about the money side of things. So normally, in order to get a project done, you go borrow money from friends and family, try to borrow money from a bank. Maybe you'd go to wealthy investors and you ask for them to invest in the company. The problem with that is, is less than 1% of the people can either end up raising money from investors or from banks. And so the majority of people end up using their savings and try to bootstrap their company. The problem is with that is 99% of the time, they just don't have the money to do that. So they end up failing, losing their money and never seeing their product come to the marketplace. Well, about eight years ago, uh, somebody came up with a concept that I believe was like a, a lifeline to inventors, right? And it's called reward-based crowdfunding. I refer to it as social funding. It allows a group of people to help support a project by simply pre-purchasing it. So the inventor shares on one of the platforms, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, and there's many more. Um, the people look at that project and they think, would I like to own that product? And if the case is yes, am I willing to pay for it prior to getting it, pay for it in advance? Because what's gonna happen is the inventor's gonna collect all that money from the people that are willing to pay for the product now, and they're going to use that money to develop the product and then bring it into the marketplace. And so that's reward-based crowdfunding. Now, we did not create the concept of reward-based crowdfunding, but what we have figured out is a better way of using it. Because here's the stats. Even though they're way better than any of the other ways of funding a project, there's still some challenges. 64% on the number one platform, and this is the one with the, the highest um, success rate, 64% fail to get any funding whatsoever. So they end up with all the work they put into it, all the time, the effort, the energy, uh, the money that they put into doing their campaign, they end up getting zero dollars. And if you think about it, if they don't have the money to do their project, now they're even further behind. 
And then 83% of the ones that are successful, the 36% that are successful, raise less than $20,000. Now, $20,000, if you have that laying in your banking account, that's a lot of money. You can go on a trip, you can go shopping, you can do lots of stuff at $20,000. But when you are trying to get a business off the ground, that's not even nearly enough money. And if you really look at the statistics, the majority of those raise less than $10,000 that is out there. So these are projects that don't have enough money. They had a successful crowdfunding campaign, but they don't have enough money to bring their product into the marketplace. <laughs> now, the reason for the fact that most of them, the majority, 64% fail is they don't have enough social capital. Every single expert in the crowdfunding space, the first thing they tell you is that if you're going to be successful in crowdfunding, you must bring your own crowd to the platform. It doesn't matter that there's over 14 million people that have pledged on projects on Kickstarter alone, probably another eight to 10 million on Indiegogo that have pledged on projects. That's not enough. You have to bring that crowd with you. And that is one of the biggest problems with crowdfunding is it's extremely hard to put that effort and that time in in order to build that crowd. So what is happening now is, and in, in, in so Cooler Brands is about supplying that crowd to inventors. I want to give you a couple of scenarios. These are real scenarios. As a matter of fact, we're going to have one of our inventors come on and actually talk here in a minute. He's going to tell you his experience with Cooler Brands. Um, but first, I'm going to talk about Len Kenzie. Len was the first project that we launched through Cooler Brands. He actually had an idea. Uh, and I said, hey, we're, we're going to launch our first project. He said, hey, I've got an idea. He shared it with me. And we decided to show it to our community. So instead of Len taking his idea and going to crowdfunding and possibly being in that 64% of people who failed or the other, you know, the balance of it, about 95% total between failing and raising less than $20,000, Len first brought it to the community, the Cooler Brands community. And the Cooler Brands community looked at the product ahead of time before it went to the crowdfunding platform and decided that they were willing to support it once it went there. So it's what we call pre-crowdfunding. And then so our community actually pledged about $50,000 towards that project. But when it went up on Kickstarter, because of our community, um, it ended up raising over $152,000. Um, Dodie, Park Smarts for Kids, she had actually tried crowdfunding prior to coming to Cooler Brands, raised about $700 on her own with Cooler Brands and by first having the community vet the project and decide if they wanted to um, support it when it went in crowdfunding, she ended up raising over $30,000 um, through Kickstarter on that project. So you can see that it works extremely well. Right now what I'd like to do is, so here are some of our inventors. They're real people, you know, and one of the cool things about Cooler Brands is when you're supporting a project here, and we're going to talk about how you're going to make money doing this because ultimately, remember, we said we have inventors and then we have people that want to build residual income. And we brought those two together for that common purpose. So right now we're covering the inventors, but we're going to get to how you, by supporting these people, by helping artists with net effects, by helping Dodie with Park Smarts, Trevor with Gun Bail, um, Julietta with Easy on Babies. Um, and with us, we actually have Rob with Moby Card. So, Rob, you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm right here. How you doing? Excellent. Tell us a little bit about your experience with Cooler Brands and, you know, um, the results and, and what it's done for you so far and maybe give them a little idea on the community and things like that. Uh, first of all, the big thing with them is when it came to the crowdfunding, we were expecting to do $50,000. I think it was in 90 days, wasn't it? We were doing 90 yep. days. Yes. Hit $50,000 within 45 days. That was really good. Um, one of the biggest assets to the Cooler Brands community is actually the community themselves, uh, bouncing things off them. You know, things don't always run the best uh, when you're doing any business. If people think that a startup is going to go off without a hitch and you're not going to have problems, um, then they're they're in some kind of a dream world. You're always going to have issues and problems. The cool thing about this is having a community back that, that's behind it that can turn around and give you ideas. I'm going to give you a couple of scenarios that we've just had. Um, first of all, we had some uh, marketing. I can take a look at our marketing and see how well it's doing and being shared and how many times it's being clicked. But when I go to Peter I, and we go to the community and say, hey, uh, we need to change some things up. What kind of ideas do we have? Well, we changed the website, which made things a lot better because we had input from people that are smart. 
and that know what they're doing. But uh, I'm going to go to the most recent one. We just had a guy um, do a jingle for us and um, do a video. And I contacted him immediately and said, that's fantastic. Let's, let's make that better, you know. Um, we've got people that are sharing the videos that we have out there, people giving us input on the videos and, and how to dial things in quicker. So instead of spending tens of thousands of dollars on marketing uh, or even more um, and trying to figure something out, you know, we've got people that are helping us dial things in, which, which is good. Yeah, well, one of the things, Rob, I know that the community helped you do, right, was bring on several thousand businesses, right, because you have a discount app. Why don't you tell them a little bit about what MobiCard is and then you can explain to them how the community has helped bring on quite a few of the businesses now that are available in there on the discount app. Okay, MobiCard, you know, people ask me to sum it up, and I always kind of struggle a little bit, but it's really easy now. MobiCard is a whole bunch of deals. It's a whole bunch of discounts, and that's what it's about. It's about what the consumer can do to save money, and not only save a little bit of money, but a lot of money. Uh, MobiCard costs, uh, if you want to spend $3.99 a month, you can do that, or $32 for the year. And we found that most people going out and using MobiCard on average three, three times to four times uh, pay for their entire year. Uh, MobiCard has evolved from something from being um, just 100 businesses a year ago to 750,000 offers. And with that, we've got an area that the, uh, the community members and affiliates can go in and they can drive businesses to that. To that area um, as well and do some bulk uploads and we've had some people that have really done a good job at that um, but the big thing is is being able to evolve from an app to a cloud-based app and being able to have all of these deals and be able to throw in now we have coupons that you can print out we have in-store coupons we have uh, which we didn't have before we just had things that were mobile so now we've evolved beyond that and and even calling it Moby Card almost doesn't describe it because it's more of a club and you can use it anywhere, either with a computer or with any type of mobile device or phone. So, but it's really instrumental to be able to build business. And uh, so it, it's great, you know. Awesome, buddy. Well, thanks for coming on and sharing with the community and with the people that are listening right now on Facebook. Thanks, bud. You bet. As you heard from Rob is, you know, this is something that uh, entrepreneurs, it helps them get their business going. It helps them get started. And so earlier I'd mentioned Len, you know, his initially the community did about 50,000. We ended up raising 152,000 on the platform, went to another platform, raised several thousand more. And since then have done tens of thousands of dollars in sales. See, Cooler Brands and its members act as a magnet, right? So we act as social proof. So when you can have a crowdfunding project and if it sits there at zero or only three or four pledges, most people will ignore it. They'll just move kind of past it. So by our members looking at the product ahead of time and pre-pledging on it, meaning they want to buy that item and then having it when they go on the crowdfunding platform, having them activate it right away by going in and putting their pledge in, that helps get the project and makes it into a successful project. One of the other things about crowdfunding is that's neat about it is, is that if you're an inventor and you develop a product, you imagine spending 50 or $100,000 developing a product and then finally getting to the point where you go, oh, would you like to buy my product? Um, and seeing then if people are willing to buy it. Crowdfunding is social proof that there is demand for your product because people are willing to give you money in exchange for that product. But the other thing that it does is it gives you massive exposure. So some of our members uh, and inventors have been contacted by retailers, by online sites, these different things. And the reason why they're being contacted is because they're seeing these successful campaigns work. So what do we get? What's in it for us? So now we've helped. The, so the first part of it, which is the money side of it, we're helping with the inventors. Remember, we talked about three things that we help with, right? The money, the branding and marketing and the sales. So we help in three areas. This is one of them. And so what's going to happen is, is when these inventors bring it to us and we decide to bring it to the community, we negotiate a royalty that's paid on the sales of every single sale on that product for the life of the product, okay? Could be five years, 10 years, 20, 30 years. This is why we say this is true residual income because these brands will continue to go on, continue to sell, and we get paid. Now, we don't only get paid when it's in crowdfunding. We don't only get paid when we sell it. It's literally when it's sold through any sales channel available. 
And so then we are able to collect that royalty. Okay. And that royalty, I'm going to explain to you, gets distributed. A majority of that gets distributed back out to you as a community member um, for doing that. So the second thing is branding and marketing. Branding and marketing, simply put, is how a brand interacts with its consumer through design, logo, and messaging. And then the marketing part of it is running commercials, events, in-store promotions, um, sponsorships. All of that is branding and marketing. The major problem with that is, is for startups, is that if you're going to start up a company, you usually have limited resources to get it started until you get sales going, which then starts bringing in revenue. Um, so the hard part about marketing is, is that normally, in almost every single case, you need to spend money up front and then you pay for the marketing, whether it's on or offline, it's this way with both of them. Online just happens to be a little bit cheaper and a little bit easier to, to see if you're getting results from it. But you're gonna spend money first and you're gonna hope that you get results from it. We came up with a better way that helps to increase the chances of success of the business because it helps them um, utilize their cash flow better. And that is, so remember we talked about Nike, a billion dollars for one person social media. A matter of fact, right now, some of the top people in the ad advertising and marketing area are people who um, are doing online marketing and their only job is to get people to share videos. That's what they do. They create content and they get people to share videos. So my thought here is when we were putting this together is, wait a minute, if people are getting paid a lot of money to get people to share, why not cut out the people who are getting paid a lot of money to get other people to share and just get the people compensated that are sharing that? So that's what branding and marketing with Cooler Brands is. It is simply you sharing a post about a product that you actually like that you would buy, that maybe you crowdfund it and you, and, or, or that you're interested in, that you're excited about. It's also about commenting on somebody else's post that they did about that product. It could also be about liking it. It could be about liking a YouTube video or sharing a YouTube video. It could be about making or doing a Facebook Live, just like we're doing here. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. So one of the neat things is, is that with our branding and marketing and with crowdfunding, a lot of us are already doing it. We're not talking about anything that takes a learning curve or much to get started because we're already doing it and we're collecting royalties on each and every single brand that we participate in, no matter where they sell. So the goal of Cooler Brands is to take these products into the marketplace, okay? So, and this is the third part of it, which is the sales side of it. So how do we help with the sales? We actually use what's called direct sales, meaning people selling to people. Um, and in the traditional home-based sense, right? Me selling something to my mom or having a friend buy it and click on online, or maybe I'm doing some online marketing and somebody goes on and buys that, okay? However, our goal though is not to stay in the direct sales business. I think that's where we really differ from the other companies that are out there. Our goal is to be a direct sales company and they're always in the direct sales industry, right? Because it doesn't really fit with their model. With us, we've put together a model that's based on royalties that pay no matter where the product sells, whether it sells at Target or online or offline. So it doesn't matter at the swap meet, um, you know, somebody setting up at a show, right? Buying the product from the vendor. We've got a lot of people doing that with the Freedom Charger. They're buying them um, at the wholesale price. They're going to set up at shows and they're going to sell tons and tons of them. And we're collecting royalties on those people selling at these, on the products that they're selling at these fairs. So when I got involved in the home-based business industry, they told me and convinced me that the, the best way to sell a product is through direct sales. Well, I want to correct that a little bit. Selling products through direct sales is one of the best ways to start selling a product. The reason why is I have a relationship with somebody. It's easy for me to say, hey, but it is not the, ultimately the best way to sell a product. It's the best way to start. And here's the proof of that, guys. The direct sales industry did about 300 billion last year. A matter of fact, if you go to the Direct Sellers Association, they estimated about 180 billion. I found one number that said about 300 billion a year and I went with the largest number I could find. So if that was the best way to sell, then more products would be sold through it than any other way, right? Walmart alone, which is a traditional and online retailer, Walmart alone last year sold over $485 billion worth of goods and goods out in the marketplace. That's over one and a half times more than what was sold in the direct sales market. Why is that? 
because again, there are better ways to sell products in direct sales. It's the best way to get started. So now let's look at this next chart here. The first number one is the direct sales industry worldwide. That literally is thousands, if not tens of thousands of companies. Number two is one company, Walmart. But number three is an even bigger and impressive number, and that is the global retail marketplace. So when I looked at this, I see it as a direct sales market is actually a limited way to sell a product because you have one sales channel, right, through each individual, but you're limiting the sales channels that you can sell through. Imagine having a business where you can um, participate in the entire $26 trillion market, meaning if it's, like I said, selling at shows, right? Selling at small stores, big stores, peer-to-peer, -peer, right? Direct sales, online, offline, all the different sales channels. And us collecting royalties on all of the sales of all the products that we help bring into the marketplace. So, how do the pools get divided up? So, guys, we do three things for inventors, okay? We do crowdfunding. So, we have a crowdfunding pool for each and every product that we do. We do branding and marketing. So, we have a branding and marketing pool for each and every product that we do. And we also have a sales pool, okay? So, once we negotiate um, the royalty, Cooler Brands keeps 20% or less. We've been keeping about 15% of the royalty. 80% plus of that actually goes back out to the community. And what we do is we actually split that up equally. So that's Cooler Brands part, the top part that came off there, the smallest part. A third of it goes into the crowdfunding pool. A third of it goes in the branding and marketing pool. And a third of it goes into the sales pool. And so that's how the royalties get split up. So if it was a 6% royalty to the community, 2% or a third of that would go into the crowdfunding pool, a third of it into the branding and marketing pool, and a third into the sales pool. So how do you earn your share of that money? It's simple. When a Cooler Brands community member helps fund, you get a point in the crowdfunding pool, you get money out of that pool. Branding and marketing, you earn points in that pool and you get a piece of that royalty. And then out of the sales pool, if you sell a product, you actually get points there. So, um, and those points give you a portion of that royalty. And I'm actually going to show you an example. I'm going to go through, uh, we're going to do the crowdfunding pool right now. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So let's say that a product was extremely successful. Three, five years down the road after we launched it, it was selling here in the U.S., it was selling in Canada, it was selling all over the world. And it was literally doing tens of millions of dollars in sales. And so the royalty rate on that type of volume at a 6% royalty would be about a million dollars for that year going into the crowdfunding pool, okay? We're going to say that you help crowdfund it. So what does that mean? You simply went on, you pre-pledged on our site. Then when it went up on Kickstarter, you just simply went and purchased the product. You actually received that product. So the value for the money you spent, you got from the product. Because you did it with cooler brands in a mass um, structured way, right, in a, in a collaborative business model, you also receive a point for that pledge. That point is one of the points that's in the crowdfunding pool. We're gonna, I'm going to use the example that in this pool, there's 2,750 points. Now, I got to say, we don't have any crowdfunding pools right now with this many points in it. Um, there don't, there's none that exist right now. All of our pools have less than this. Our crowdfunding pools have less than this. Um, so let's say that the reverse royalty, the share, the third that went into this crowdfunding pool was a million dollars. You would simply take the million dollars, divide it by the 2,750 points total in the pool. That would give you $363.63 a point. You have one point because you purchased the product. You now in this royalty period, we're going to say this was a year, but we pay royalties on a quarterly basis is $363.63. Now, our most expensive product so far has been, I believe, $70 that you had to purchase. So think about this. You bought a $70 product, you got the product, and now in this hypothetical situation, you're receiving $363.63 a year, and if next year it sells it as much or more, that check can be the same or it can grow. And the following year after that, and the following year after that, and the following year after that. See, one of the cool things about Cooler Brands is when you earn a point is a permanent point. It is always with you. It never goes away. So as long as there is money, this is really where we relate to um, and Michael Jackson or Elvis Presley or any of these people.
that have sung a song and every time that song generates revenue, no matter how, whether it's used for a commercial or whether it's played on a radio, they continue to collect revenues on that. They continue to collect that royalty. So this works exactly the same in all the rest of the pool. In the branding and marketing pool, you earn, let's say, 35 points by doing this branding and marketing. Again, simple, sharing on your Facebook wall, tweeting, um, you know, liking videos, posting things, uh, replying back to other people's posts, things that we're already doing on a daily basis. This pool would end up with more points in it because there's going to be more people that participate. So we'll say 35,000. Again, equal share, a million dollars. You divide that million by the 35,000 times that times your points and you see how much money you've earned right there, $999.95 in that hypothetical example. And the sales pool works exactly the same. You sell a product, you receive a point in the sales pool for that product. That gives you the right to a share of, in this hypothetical example, a million dollars in royalties. Uh, let's say the total in this pool ends up being 15,000 points. You divide the million by the 15,000. It's $66 a point. Let's say you earned eight points. That's going to give you $532.80. But remember, just like in the reward-based crowdfunding pool, in the branding and marketing pool, those points are permanent. And in the sales pool, these are permanent points. And they're giving you a portion of the royalty no matter where and when that product sells. But so far on one product, let's just cover it real quick in this hypothetical example. 363 for the crowdfunding, the product that you actually purchased and received. For doing what we already do, sharing through our social media, you made another thousand bucks basically. Um, and then for selling, you know, uh, let's say that was eight products or 10 products, something like that, eight or 10 sales, maybe 30, 40, 50 dollars a sale, whatever it was. Um, you received $532. But remember, this continues to go on. So next year, if it generates as much or more or a little less, then this will fluctuate up and down. But in most cases, it'll continue to grow. Now, on top of that, you're also going to receive affiliate commissions on every sale that you do. And we have something called the momentum bonus. And I'll talk about those right now. So the affiliate commission ranges anywhere from about 12 to 18, 20%. Um, of the sale that you do at the time that you do the sale and then you earn the points which give you the residual income and that's paid on every single sale and a matter of fact um, it's actually paid um, out to multiple people and I'll explain that when we get to how if you want to you can share this and help grow the community it's not needed remember when I started the presentation I said the number one thing that we needed to make sure is that you could make money without ever recruiting, ever bringing anyone else into the program. So everything we've talked about up to this point is just simply you going ahead and, and supporting projects, doing branding and marketing, and doing sales of those products. The second pool is the momentum pool. Um, and what happens with the momentum pool is let's say, and I'll use um, Zip and Store as an example. Zip and Store needed $20,000. Um, to do to get the project off the ground. We ended up raising 152,000. So a percentage, what goes out to the community is about 4.8% of the total above that 20,000. So it's 130,000 times 4.8%. And that is paid out on the same value as the crowdfunding pool, meaning on the same point value. So if you have a point, you'd get your point share of that pool that's there. And that's done in every single project because we always raise that at least that minimum amount and above. So there's always, a, it could be a very small momentum pull. It can be a large one, depending on the success of that. So those are two other additional bonuses that you get paid that are more immediate money than on the royalty side. So now you do not have to share, but if you do like to share, if you're somebody like, hey, I'd love to share this with other people, you can basically leverage the activity of other people. So if they do a point, if they do a crowdfunding, they're going to get that point. However, if you refer them to the program, you can actually get a partial about, well, four tenths of a point um, in addition to their one point. So they got a point, you got four tenths of a point. So I'll give you another hypothetical example. Let's use the one before this where you had one point in the reward based crowdfunding pool with a million in royalties, the 35 points with a million, and then the eight points in the sales pool. Let's say that you referred two people to the community. And they did exactly what you did. Now, it's not going to work out this way, right? Everybody doing exactly the same thing. Some people might have more points, less points. And let's say that between those two people, they ended up referring four. One person could have referred four. 
one person three, one person one. It could have been one person referring one person, referring one person, referring one person, but somehow you ended up with four people down on those next few four levels below there. Um, you At that point, you would make over $4,000 on that one project a year in that hypothetical example. But the neat part about that is, is the two people you referred, they would make over $2,500 in compensation, even though you know, they didn't do as much as you, right? As far as bringing in um, you know, uh, members, right? Leveraging that. And then the four that just came in that haven't brought anybody else in, they haven't referred anybody, they would have made over $1,800 each in that scenario. So we have an, a business here where 100% of the people, whether you bring people in or not, can uh, make money simply by supporting, by helping entrepreneurs, by helping people like Rob Hunt launch their businesses and make their dreams come true. Oh, in summary, receiving a check in the mail in the form of residual income is like no other income on the planet. Do some consistent work in the community, supporting projects now, and be rewarded with royalties for years to come. Royalty income is such an amazing income. The only problem with royalty income is, is that a very small percentage of the population actually receive it. We want to change that with cooler brands. We want to make royalty income, and that's what we're doing, and that's what we've done. We want to make royalty income available to people just like yourself and myself um, and many other people out there. So what do we develop? What do you get when you get involved with cooler brands? Basically, every single thing you need to build, to build your business if you want to share. If you don't want to share, everything you need in order to support projects. We get you uh, custom software. You get a sales site uh, at your shopcooler.com. Um, you get access to our patent pending business model and an evaluation site so you can look at and, and see what the project is all about. Uh, a customer service. Uh, we have a community bill of rights. One of those rights on the community bill of rights is that the, the community has a permanent seat on the Cooler Brands board. So every decision we make, everything we do, the community knows about it, right? Because they have a representative on that board. So there's no backroom deals happening or anything like that that can affect the community. Um, also, inventors. Guys, most of our inventors, not all, but most of our inventors were Cooler Brands members when they brought the product to us. So if you have an idea and you're going, God, I just don't know what to do, then Cooler Brands is the business that you want to look at and uh, seriously and get involved with. And then, of course, we offer training. Um, guys, I've been involved in four or five other, com five other companies, and we built successfully in those companies. And in all those companies, they had training programs on how to be a good recruiter, right? I have never seen a program. Now, we don't recruit. We influence. And, and there is a difference there uh, between those two. But I've never seen a program that's as effective as the program that's being taught here at Cooler Brands. Uh, Corey is the main teacher in that class, but we're expanding and adding other teachers. I've never seen a percent percentage of the people that have taken a class that are getting results from it. And guess what? This class is actually included in the cost of getting involved in Cooler Brands. If you went to find somebody teaching this class um, outside of our model, it would literally cost you at least a thousand or two thousand dollars to get taught this class. So, what does it cost to be involved in Cooler Brands? Two hundred forty-nine dollars, guys. Not a year. It's two hundred forty-nine dollars for a lifetime membership right now to be in Cooler Brands. And if you go, man, I'm excited about this. I don't have two hundred forty-nine dollars. You can get involved and do twelve payments of twenty-five dollars each, and ends up being three hundred dollars over the course of a year. Get involved, and then you have a paid lifetime membership. These are both unlimited memberships. So you can pledge as many projects as you want. You can brand and market without pledging on them. You can sell all the products that we have available and you can influence other people into the community. Now, if you say, hey, I'm not really interested in influencing people in the community, you can get involved at our, uh, at our um, supporter level, which is, you, it's limited it, by the way of you cannot influence people in the community. And if you want to brand and market on a product, you have had to have um, pledged on it on the crowdfunding site. So you have to have supported it in crowdfunding in order to do the branding and marketing. You do have the ability to sell all the products that are available in Cooler Brands in that position. Okay, so those are the limitations with that. And that is a lifetime membership as well. Um, there are no other additional costs. And we provide all the stuff that we talked about on the slide before that. So guys, Cooler Brands goal is not just a few products. Our goal is to put out a thousand or more products over the next eight to 10 years. Um, and imagine 
that this is your global business. You didn't influence anybody. All you simply did was support entrepreneurs, help their dreams come true, help them become successful. And now you have 20, 30, 50 products that all over the world that are selling. They're selling in, in, in South America. They're selling in Africa. They're selling in Europe. They're selling in Asia. Um, and a matter of fact, one of the products that we've worked on, our very first product, has a very good chance of being a global retail um, presence within the next six to nine months. So a little bit over a year and a half after it has gone through our system, it will be being sold in probably about 20 to 50 countries around the world. So imagine having that happen in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, somebody's walking into a store, somebody's going to a show somewhere, somebody's buying a product from somebody, somebody's opening up a catalog, somebody's going online and ordering a product. And each and every single time, you're collecting a royalty on that transaction, guys. This is an absolutely amazing opportunity, um, you know, especially if you're sitting there going, I want to build some residual income. Oh, by the way, six months money back guarantee. You get involved after six months, you go, no, nah, you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. It's not working for me. We'll give you your money back. As well, this is willable for at least one generation. If that generation picks up the torch, and continues to pledge and share and, and work on projects, um, then they as well can pass it on to the next generation. So guys, that's our presentation for tonight. I thank you guys for, um, for being with us.